Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new One GX One Pro from One Netbug. A few months ago, we took a look at the original version of the One GX, the non-pro model, and personally I wasn't a big fan of it given that it was using a 10th gen Intel CPU and performance really wasn't great for the price. But hopefully all that's changed with the new pro model because the pro model is actually using the new 11th gen Tiger Lake CPU. You can actually pick it up in two different variants, one with an i5, one with an i7, and I was lucky enough to get my hands on the i7 version. And with these 11th gen Tiger Lake CPUs, they're actually paired with the new Intel XE graphics, and I've really been wanting to test them out on the channel, because on paper, performance with these new Intel integrated graphics looks absolutely amazing, but we'll definitely have to get into some real world testing just to see how it really performs. As you can see, the One GX Pro is a clamshell design. We have a 7-inch IPS display, a QWERTY keyboard. This does have Wi-Fi 6 built in, and it does support an external GPU. So when you're done in handheld mode, you can bring this over to your desk, plug it into an eGPU, and get outstanding performance in kind of a desktop mode with this little PC. But overall, this was designed to be a handheld gaming machine, and we're definitely going to get into some gaming in just a second. But first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the One GX detachable controllers. Now these are actually Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz. You can connect them directly to this little handheld. And they come with this nice little zipper pouch. And basically, once these are connected to the machine, it makes an awesome little handheld. Now these will work over Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz. Here's the right hand side. It's got a little locking mechanism in it. It's really easy to put them on and take them off. But we have all the buttons we need. A, B, X, Y, start, select, dual analog sticks with L3 and R3, a D-pad and four triggers, and these will connect to the Windows machine in X input mode, so they'll work with anything that supports controllers on Windows, be it PC games or even our favorite emulators. So here's a closer look at the machine. We have that 7-inch 1080p IPS display, an RGB backlit QWERTY keyboard, and there are several different modes that you can set this up in. Now this unit does support 4G and 5G right out of the box. We have our SIM card slot over here. On the right hand side, we do have a single micro HDMI port and around back we have this dual ventilation setup, two USB 4 type C ports, one full size USB 3.0 port and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And yes, the USB type C ports here are Thunderbolt 4 compatible so we can add an external GPU quite easily. So as for the specs on the Pro model, they're actually looking really good. Like I mentioned, you can opt for the 11th Gen i5 or the i7. And with this one here, we have the i7-1160G7. Four cores, eight threads, base clock of 1.1, boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. The GPU is the new Intel Iris R XE with 96 execution units at 1.1 gigahertz. 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X running at 4,267 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte NVMe M.2 SSD, and this can be upgraded to a two terabyte down the road if you ever want to, seven inch IPS 1080p touchscreen, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and it has a 12,000 milliamp hour battery. The charging system on this mini PC actually supports PD quick charging, so if you do have a battery pack that supports PD, you can charge this up on the go from one of your external battery packs. Alright, so we're definitely going to be testing out some games here and running some benchmarks, but first up I just wanted to give you a quick look. We have this little navigation nub, and that's usually what I call them. Now I'm not a big fan of these, you can change the sensitivity in the settings if you want to. We also have a performance setting, if we press function and the fan button, that fan will kick up and you can definitely hear it, but now the unit's in performance mode so it'll keep that CPU cool enough and we won't throttle while we're gaming. Before we get into some gaming, I did want to show off some benchmarks here. This is actually really impressive for a small handheld like this. So the first benchmark I ran was Geekbench 5, and I'll tell you what, this little thing is trucking. We got a single score of 1462 and a multi-core of 5081. Next on the list, PC Mark 10 with a total score of 4623. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, we have 3D Mark Night Raid with a total score of 14858. And just to put this into perspective for you, recently I reviewed a smaller ASUS PC known as the PN50. It has the Ryzen 4500U, and on that unit we scored an 11,286. Now, I was actually expecting that little Ryzen APU to beat this out in GPU performance, but it looks like Intel has definitely stepped up their game for these integrated graphics. Firestrike 4318, and finally, Time Spy. 
with a 1507. Now these scores aren't all that impressive when we take a look at desktop GPUs or dedicated GPUs, but when it comes to integrated graphics, especially these Intel graphics, I think these scores are really great. Now it's time to move into a little bit of gaming. First up, we have GTA 5. I'm using those detachable controllers. They do have some feedback going on, and it's actually really strong. The, the vibration motors built into these are excellent. Now, when they're detached from the unit, they're pretty light, so I didn't think there was much to them, but they actually work really well, as you can see here. So with GTA 5, I'm at 720p, normal settings. We're on battery power right now, and I got an average of 56 FPS. Now, this will definitely jump up in different situations, but driving around in the city, I was getting an average of 56, and that's usually where I spend most of my time in this game. Now, in Franklin's house, it was at 118, but as soon as you walk outside, it will dip on down. Fast-paced racing and things like this, you can expect over 50 with this unit. Next up, we got Overwatch, medium settings, 100% resolution scale, 720p, and I got an average of 86 FPS with this one. It runs really great on this. Personally, I would just lock this at 60. I could probably turn this up to high with V-Sync on and just keep it at 60 all day. Since we're only working with a 7-inch screen here, I know it's a bit hard to see those stats that I got going up in the top left-hand corner, so what I'm going to do is plug this into HDMI. That way, I can connect my game capture device and we can get a better look at this screen. I got a lot of games to test here. Next on the list, we have Forza Horizon 4, 720p, low settings, working great here. I actually got an average of 65 FPS out of this game. And when we're talking the 720p resolution, keep in mind this is a 7-inch display, and it actually looks really good at 720p on this built-in screen. Doom Eternal, 720p, low settings, I got an average of 46 FPS. Now when booting this game up, it does give me a warning about the built-in Intel graphics not being really compatible, but as you can see, it does work on this handheld, and I really do wish I could have got a little more out of it, but we're sitting at an average of 46 with this one. Next up, Skyrim Special Edition, 720p, medium settings, it'll lock at 60. If you want to do the original Skyrim at high settings, it'll also do it at 60, but with this one here, I did take all the settings up to high, and I was getting an average of around 54, so I just dropped it right back down to medium, and it's fully playable. I was pretty sure that CSGO would work well on this, so here we have it at medium settings, 720p, and I was getting an average of 96 FPS. I do get some micro stutters every once in a while, so you might want to mess around with those settings a little more, but in the end, I think performance is great with this one. I also tried out Microsoft Flight Simulator, 720p, low-end settings from the menu, got an average of 31 FPS, I was actually really surprised by this. Now when we get inside of the plane, there are some issues going on. You'll see the screen start flashing and starts blacking out on us, and it really comes down to the driver for that Intel GPU. But I was still really surprised to see that we at least got 30 FPS out of this game, and when you're outside of the plane, everything looks great and it functions just fine. And finally, at least for this video, Cyberpunk 2077 got an average of 21 FPS. I knew we were going to be hard pressed to run this at a playable frame rate, but I still wanted to throw it in here. Uh, this is just one of those games that's really hard to run. You could probably drop the resolution down a little more, but even on the built-in screen when this is sitting at a lower resolution than 720p, you can really tell the difference and it just doesn't look great.
Okay, so everything we've seen up until this point is running on the built-in Intel graphics, but this does support Thunderbolt, so we can connect an eGPU. I have a Sonnet GPU dock here with an RTX 2070 in it. Got my monitor set up, everything's good to go. Let's go ahead and get this all hooked up. Basically, all I need to do is plug this into one of the Thunderbolt ports. We got some activity over here on the GPU side of things. And by the way, this is the Sonnet 350 watt eGPU dock, and I actually just have the cover taken off of it. So I'll give this a few seconds to register, and we'll get some activity over here on the bigger monitor. So I have HDMI coming out of the RTX 2070 to this monitor, and we're just plugged in with that single Thunderbolt cable. And now, instead of using the built-in Intel graphics, we can use this RTX 2070. So real quick, I'm just going to run another GPU benchmark with this RTX 2070 attached and just compare it to the built-in graphics versus this external GPU. Alright, so TimeSpy is finished up here. Total score with the eGPU, 5,851. And if you remember, with the built-in Intel XE graphics, we only scored a 1,507. So we have a significant boost on the GPU side of things with this whole setup. So when you're on the go, you use it as a handheld, you get some decent 720p gaming out of it. There's some lower end games that'll run at 1080p, no problem on this. But when you get back to the house, you plug it into your docking station. And depending on the external GPU you're using, you can get some really great performance. Real quick, here's GTA 5 running with that eGPU. Remember, on the handheld itself, with the built-in Intel XE graphics, 720p, normal settings, we were averaging 56 FPS. But now with this GPU connected, we're able to go up to high, 1080p, and get over 100 out of this same game. So overall, I'm really impressed with the One GX One Pro's performance as it sits like a handheld gaming machine. It does a pretty good job with those integrated Intel graphics. They've definitely come a long way with this XE version. I do like the form factor here. The detachable controllers work way better than I ever thought they would, but I do have one major complaint about this unit. Mainly, it comes down to the audio in the handheld itself. It doesn't seem like these speakers get that loud. I've gone into the settings and tried to mess around with it, but I just can't get that much volume out of these speakers. Now, it's still totally audible, even with this fan going at full blast, but it would have been nice to get a little more volume out of it. But I'm really glad that they kept that 3.5mm headphone jack on the back. That way we can plug headphones into this really easily and you don't have to rely on Bluetooth or anything like that. Now, I will have this in my possession for about the next week, so I'm going to get some more testing done. I'll have a couple more videos coming out, but my next one will be a full emulation video on this unit. With that 11th gen i7 CPU and those Iris XE graphics, I think this is going to do a great job with emulation. We might even be able to pull off some SimU and PS3 at full speed with this unit. So definitely stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in seeing that. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I would like to know in the comments what you guys want to see running on this. I can do a teardown. I can do a bunch of stuff with this. Just give me some ideas and I'll have a few more videos coming up very soon. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.